But there was one time that I act like I thought he was sleeping. So I quietly it <laughs> in the bed. Did he giggle? He rolled over. He smelled it. And he actually yelled at me. And he was like, that is so fucking unattractive. What? I was like, I've been with you for a year and I've had to put up with this for a year. And the one it was time the same asked- guy. <gasps> no. Yeah. To another episode of Big Moon. Say you missed us. Woo! Say it. We know you missed us. We know you did. The validation. <laughs> Today we have the beautiful, the stunning, the one that looks like she's 18 forever and ever and ever and ever. Nikki Limo. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we have Jess Lizama Jess here. Lizama. Hi guys. Hi. So happy to be back. Thank you for Yay. having me. We're so happy to have you. Mm-hmm. Freaking. Honor. Oh my gosh. Gorgeous Freaking, woman. Freaking. Oh my gosh. Freaking. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then of course you guys heard we have Nikki and then there's me Gina hi hi Gina hello today we are talking about uh what married people miss about being single <laughs> and we have two ladies here who are happily no I've been married One, and divorced twice yeah <laughs> she's been married divorced twice about and this about to be in her actual happily ever after, mm-hmm. her happily ever after. in a very healthy good relationship now and I'm so excited for her yay mm-hmm. thank you yeah. and Nikki is married to scumbag Steve I love him <laughs> He's the best. I love him. That's and my nickname for him. Oh, no, I love it. He's, he's the best. He's the sweetheart Steve. Is he more really like is. It. And I'm holding it down for the uh, non-married The people, single team. The single team. That's me. So, you know. You're doing it right. Th- thank you. You got a good balance here. Yeah. yeah. They both have experience in being married. And uh, uh, we found this uh, list on BuzzFeed of people telling us what they miss most about being single and you know or not being married and i figured we go through it oh i'm excited i am i'm excited too because i'm really curious about what the items are me too two cents yeah (laughs) two cents i mean two cents i can't wait to hear your thoughts too (laughs) and you've been through it's several yeah and you Mm -hmm. have experiences from both that are right very valuable to share i think i want to i want to get that from you and i want to know like yeah yeah, what your expectations things. would yeah. be of if you were married. Like, am I normal for feeling this way? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then, um, so I haven't read through the article yet, not because I wasn't unprepared. <laughs> <laughs> we are I'm always w- prepared. Always. And I just burped into the mic. <clears throat> that was um, planned. Yeah. That prepared. was super planned. <laughs> so I wanted to read through it and f- for it to be like the first time. Yeah, so yeah. very yeah. candid, very natural. Yeah. I love that. That's mm-hmm. the best. So let's start. The first one is, I miss the quiet. Except for TV, music, or video games. It was so quiet in my house. Now with the wife and three little girls, it's a madhouse. Sometimes when it's just me and the dog, I look over and I apologize to him. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Scruffy. I did I have, been in, I have been in loud houses before. Mm-hmm. Can't say our house is like that. Cats are pretty quiet. Right. Um, we don't have kids. Right. So I don't know if that's a, a married thing as so much as a parent thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Jess, you had a child. That's true. Was it and loud? I, yes, I did. And, and you have a dog. And you had it's a dog. Yeah. Oh my god, that's true. I'm like, oh my god, that's right. I did. I had a child. Um, <laughs> it's a long time I ago. I'm living like both worlds now because Lacey is an eight year old. Uh, her one of her very closest friends is also gay, and so it was her egg, and they had a surrogate. Aww. And so we have Magic Baby Quinn, who yes, children are loud and very energetic, and then it's quiet. So it is a parenting thing, right. yeah. sure. And then when I had Corinne, all of my attention went to her, but I worked a lot, so I don't even know. I blacked out. <laughs> yeah, I guess when I have kids, I could better relate to that. I do enjoy quiet. I'm not, I, and that's why I can't have a dog, I think, mm. because I always heard my neighbor's dogs and I, I <laughs> like cats. They're quiet. They're quiet. Right, Nibbler? Except for this one. He's kind of yeah. very vocal. I love it. <laughs> Nibbler yells at me all the time. Yeah. He's like, touch he, me. He's very demanding. Mm-hmm. He's the dog cat. He is. But I don't mind him either. I think he's... <laughs> He could be a gateway to dogs, too, for cat people. <laughs> yeah. um, but were they quiet before is my thing? Because I'm pretty loud. Cats? Women. Well, oh, women. Women. <laughs> In marriages. Oh. Like, I, Lacey's like, you talk a lot. Like, you're very, yeah, I, I wouldn't make noises. say quiet. Yeah. I, I definitely am, I talk to myself, and I <laughs> am, la- I don't realize it, Um, but he's also tucked in a room, like, a way. Right. Like, I'm, I don't know. Like, I feel like when we share, when we had an apartment, and we both were working ho- from home at the same time because when we got together he actually went to work and then there came a time where we both worked from home and that was weird it felt like 
I felt a little encroached on because right. I like having a quiet house all the time and like doing my whatever I do. And like that way, if I have to cry or yell or scream, no one's like judging me to your own space. Because I guess I am loud, but I like everything else to be quiet. Right. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, he uh, he would clear his throat a lot. And I remember getting like annoyed annoyed at it yeah and you're like why he doesn't does he do- realize he does that and it, while he's reading he's just always like <clears throat> <clears throat> just old man and noises like, oh and you're like is this a twitch i'm so confused you, i'm just- not gonna complain to him because it's I don't want him to feel no, bad about yeah. it. Yeah, and then he's all self-conscious but about it. But I just, it. I'm like, we need offices. <laughs> we definitely need separate offices. And I think that's what it comes down to is like the house is going to be loud with little ones mm-hmm. and it's where can you carve out time for yourself? Yeah. Like also for mental health. <laughs> yeah. You know? And, and you definitely need to, to have alone time, like eat, whether that's going to the gym or going on a walk around the neighborhood. Or locking or, yourself in the closet and yeah. eating your own Snickers by yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So no just, judgment. The balance has to be there for sanity purposes. So mm-hmm. How about you, Casey? Like you came into... Tiff and Isaac, does it ever feel like it's like when it like it's just never quiet? It's just continuously like, nodding. Yes. I'm like Nikki. I love quiet, and the moment they moved in with me, it was a lot to handle and comprehend. And he said he's like me. He enjoys quiet, and the Sensory moment overload. they moved in with him, mm-hmm. it was just a lot to process at a time. I totally agree with <laughs> that. To appreciate it, though. Yes. Now in the quiet, it's kind of like. Oh, I, it's a I good save. That's a good save, Casey. Yeah, he says, uh, you learned to appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a trained husband. <laughs> uh, okay, so the next one says, I miss when things were where I left them. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, excuse me, who touched the bread? <laughs> Who touched my Snickers? <laughs> I obviously have some trauma around Snickers. Yeah, yeah seriously. Like, like, she has a hoard of Snickers, yeah. I think. I can always get you for your birthday now. Yeah. Yeah. So you bag of Snickers. Like, Just, uh, that of Snickers. Yeah. Are you okay? No. <laughs> my yeah, that's true. Because you maybe put something down and then they picked it up. Was it like a phone charger? Because this has caused many of fights in marriages. <laughs> oh. You know what I mean? Has it? Stop touching my phone charger. <laughs> that was like a big point of contention in Joy's, really? Joe's and I marriage. Yeah, I'm like, can you not take my charger? Again, it's I got my ha- I, um, on him. I'm kind of the opposite. So I'm a scatterbrained crazy bird. Like I, I put my keys down and I'm like, where do they go? I just had them. Someone I just had them. them. And Steve always knows where they are. And I'm like, it's so helpful to have someone that knows where the fuck I put things down. I know where everything is. And vice versa. Like he'll be like, I can't find my glasses. I'm like, they're um under the shelf on the bed, like um under, like on the, by the sock that you put there. Yeah, lift the notebook. There they will be. <laughs> there, they, there they are. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. Lacey will misplace her phone or her keys. It's always the phone or the keys. And yeah. I always know where they are. Yeah. And <laughs> I think that's such a good, I think that's the sign that that's the one that's the sign that that's the one <laughs> if you're losing something and they know where they it know is where to find it that's the one that's the one well i lose things all the time so i guess it wouldn't change very much for me <laughs> as a single person but also earlier i was thinking as a single person it is really nice to just have my house completely silent when i need it to be True. yeah yeah like i whenever we go out or like i have work or I have friends all the time when i'm going out with them it's nice to come home and it's just quiet and it's how you left it yeah no one picked up anything Mm -hmm. and misplaced it Mm -hmm. you know snickers um (laughs) ever since steve got his own like little man cave Mm -hmm. because i like everything to be a certain way i get to be decorated a certain way i like things to be in a certain place and it's mostly for my own sanity because i will create chaos wherever i go i'll make a hurricane of objects wherever i go if things don't have a system and so I created these systems so that I can keep my house tidy because otherwise it's going to be a disaster. And <laughs> so um, when Steve didn't have his little man cave office, the system would constantly be getting fucked with. And yeah. I'm like, oh, no, I can't. My head is not it's not working and nothing's working. <laughs> and then giving him his own space, he can mess up his space as much as he want. I never see it. It doesn't affect the other systems. And I and don't systems are a deal go. with it. And so we have a very happy marriage. I was just going to say, that comes down to communication, too. Because imagine if you weren't communicative and yeah. he was messing with your systems and you thought nothing's working. And then you projected that onto your relationship where you're like, nothing's working. We aren't working. I think that's what happens a lot of the times is you can't figure out what the problem is other than the to variable, communicate it. other than the variable that there's new persons in your life. Right. It's like you can't really pinpoint what's driving you up the wall. So then you just start blaming them for everything. <laughs> for everything. Because you're like, it's this isn't uh, working. Yeah, it's just you. It's you. Um, I put my body wash here. You took a shower. You moved it. We're done. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> but then I think being aware of like, what is the thing, the like exact thing that they did that Break it is, down. is throwing you off. Mm-hmm. And then you can, yeah, you work backwards from there. And if you're able to communicate with that with them 
usually if they care about you and they love you, they're like, oh, OK, yeah, no, They'll bend. we'll we'll work around it. Like we'll figure out a solution together. And and those are the building blocks of like a foundation of a healthy relationship is just learning how to make each other's lives easier. Mm. And that's how you know they're the one, too. That's true. Oh, yeah. The one shitty guy I dated, he had like a uh, two sinks and it was completely empty because he kept it super nice and clean, except for one side. He had his toothbrush and I just had to use that side for the makeup because there's a double mirror. Mm-hmm. And he would yell. He's like, why can't you just do your makeup on the other side? I'm like, all you have to do is just take your toothbrush and go and move yeah. it over because you just needed the sink. Yeah. And he was just the double side. And I'm like, are you seriously starting a fight over this? And he goes, oh, yeah, you're right. I'm like, so that's good. That's good advice. That's yeah. good advice. Okay. Communication, compromise. Right? Look at us. Go us. Yeah. 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 Advice one hundred and one. <laughs> Move your toothbrush. We have some XP. Yeah. <laughs> Is that? Yeah. See, I Ooh, knew a gamer I like term. it. <laughs> Gonna use I it. I'm impressed. I got her. Um, <laughs> peaceful sleep. I miss not being beaten in my sleep by my wife. I bought a king size bed so you can fight your dream ninjas on your side of the bed. <laughs> Stay away, please. And it's the snoring that keeps me awake or wakes me up. And another person says, sleeping in the middle of a bed like a starfish, also eating in bed and having five pillows to myself is the best part of being single. And this is why a lot of older people sleep in two separate beds. Yeah, yeah. my parents sleep in two separate bedrooms. I always thought it's because they don't get along anymore, but is this like a no. marriage it's thing? A, it's a snoring, I think it's like, a snoring yeah, thing. It's like uh, my, my dad said, she, my mom snores so loud. Mm. And and he used to like start kicking her like not hard but like you know like, like to hey get, yeah bring, stop right. <laughs> and and that my mom would constantly be woken up by him kicking her and then she was like getting upset because she was like oh, why she can't help it yeah. Yeah. yeah and so they were getting into a lot of fights over the sleep <laughs> over the sleep, <laughs> yeah. sleep is important. <laughs> so they they so- solved their problem by <laughs> switching rooms um I, earplugs for me in a sound machine Oh, oh wow. okay. And I sleep like a sardine anyway. This mm. is I sleep like a geisha, so this that's is me how sleeping she on my get side. Wrinkles. She's a vampire. Ooh. She's oh like yeah. This. That's me sleeping on my side. That's genius. <laughs> why are you an that's angel why. even in sleep? That's not fair. Oh. I yeah. sleep like a drool machine and my <laughs> face is smushed into a pillow Same. and it's just drool like this. <laughs> <He's> super sexy. <laughs> still. He's like, you sleep like an angel. It's because he can't see my face because I'm turned away from him, but he just hears it. He's like, You don't snore, you just make this noise. It's like Oh, <laughs> and I'm like, that's really cute. You sound like a freaking thunder mountain. <laughs> and if I ever get woken up in the middle of the night, I can't it's go him. back to sleep because of him. <laughs> but yeah, guest rooms help. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just sleep diagonal on my bed, and then my cat sleeps directly on my face, which <laughs> suffocates mm-hmm. me at night. So oh, I get like, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm asked. Exactly, I'm but asked. Then, like. And, well, I mean, I can't breathe, so I wake up panicking. <laughs> or when I first brought him you home, you like it? I do. <laughs> when I first brought him home, he would wake me up every morning by stepping directly on my throat. So that's mm. always nice. He's like, too. "Mommy, I heard you ask for this." Yeah. <laughs> I heard you like when the nice man was over yeah. last time. <laughs> I saw him do it. I'm just trying to make you happy, <laughs> <laughs> mommy. You like this? <laughs> How does this feel? Right? <laughs> can't ball in the throat. That's hot. true. You said starts, step on my neck. Yeah, that's what you said. That's true. And he like does this to your boobs. Do you like? <laughs> I'm doing it too. And I see why he likes this. You're a good boy, Kitty. I'm yeah, a good boy. boy. He's like, you're a good boy. Yes, I am. Number four says, money. My money was my money to do whatever I wanted with. That's what they miss about oh. being single. I think separate finances can help a lot of marriages for sure. Sure. If there's one person that's like too controlling over the finances, I don't understand that. Yeah. Um, I can only speak from other marriages that I've heard of uh, in my family, like other members of my family. Like they uh, I heard them talk about how like so and so controls the finances and they want to, you know, spend it on a vacation. But uh, their significant other wants to save for retirement and they fight about it all the time. And mm. I'm like, wow, I can't imagine that because if i was contributing to the finances i feel like i should have a say in the finances um again systems it's like i think if you can establish systems very early on in your relationship the better the better yeah and and then you can see if you're even compatible because there's there's two components of a a good relationship a long-lasting relationship in my opinion it's uh compatibility is one and then uh What's the, com- the chemistry is the other. So sometimes people have crazy chemistry, crazy chemistry, but they're not compatible in any other sense. Like they fight over the finances. They fight over the, the where things should go. They fight over everything else. And sometimes they're very compatible. Like on paper, they got everything wor- worked out. They're very smart. No they chemistry. Work they just don't fuck, oh. like to fuck each other. <laughs> there's like, I can't imagine kissing him. It's like being married to your like sibling. And I feel like there's when you listen to married couples, there's so, there's two distinct ways to tell which one it is like one will be like 
you know, marriage is like a business, you know, you have to oh, operate yeah. in it. You know, the <laughs> sex is going to die and blah, 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 blah. But you keep going because it just works. And that's really what the how the society runs. Mm -hmm. And then the other people are like, this fucker, I fucking hate him. But oh, I can't live without him. I fucking got to be with him. I don't understand. Like, he look at this shit is everywhere. Blah, blah, blah. But I got to fucking stand systems stand in place. By him. I'm like, OK, you guys are chemistry. You guys are compatibility. But you don't have both. If you can find a way to have both, you will be in a very good spot. And that's also how you know it's the one <laughs> and that's how you know it's the one <laughs> but um so yeah early on in our relationship steve owed thirteen thousand to the irs and my dad's an accountant and he like helped him out with that situation he didn't pay for it a lot of people were like nikki's dad bailed steve out no no no, no. steve paid for it he just got, was able to work it down a bit um mm. but yeah steve didn't know that like when you're a 1099 employee and independent contractor that you have to set aside your taxes yeah that um they don't get taken out of your paycheck for you and so he was very shocked at the tax bill at the end of the year and a lot of people do encounter that problem and so um after that initial going into the relationship i was like okay i know how to manage finances you go make money i'll help you manage finances I'll figure everything out. Anything he wants to buy, he, anything over $500, we talk about it together. Mm -hmm. So big purchases, we talk about together. But anything less than that, he's free to buy whatever he wants to buy. I'm free to buy whatever I want to buy. We don't question each other. And then it, unless I'm like, hey, we got to kind of be a little bit more stringent towards the, this week for till the end of the month just because we're running low on this budget. Right. Um, he'll tighten up. I'll tighten up. But other than that, we don't really... Hmm. You have a system in place that works. System. Yeah, good. everything's budgeted out. We just everything's on auto pay, so it doesn't really. It's not really cumbersome. Right. That's good. Uh, let me see. Number five says, "I miss taking off and doing whatever the fuck I want, whenever I want." Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think I I have I always have a life outside of my partner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's really important. It's really healthy. To flex your independence mm -hmm. because otherwise, yeah, you will miss that. And that's not ever something you want to miss when you're in a relationship because then we go back to that thing where it's like you're blaming them. Yeah. I can't be myself or have fun with my friends because you're here. <laughs> All yeah. the time. Obviously, it's different also when you have kids too because you can't just that, fuck off. And, see, that's right. different. Yeah. Parenting. Me, mm -hmm. A lot of these problems I feel like are kid, like parent kid related right. rather than marriage related because if you have a healthy enough marriage where you're able to communicate with your partner about your needs and wants and they respect you for it i don't think you'll have any of these problems with steve i we both are very independent and i could not imagine telling him not to do the things he wants to do during right. the day and i can't imagine him like when i was saying earlier when guys at the poker table are like your husband lets you just play poker and i'm like lets me like yeah. how in what world would i need permission like i just can't fathom that that's a thing mm -hmm. i would never be with someone that needed me to ask permission to do something i want to do and vice versa like if he wants to go out unless it's like could i go to a strip club every night like obviously like we're gonna have a chat about that right, right. Yeah, that, like, that might be over the 500 hundred dollar limit yeah yeah true know? yeah <laughs> that's out of our budget cool it down <laughs> but if it's like a it's a hobby it's a skill it's something that you enjoy doing like why the fuck wouldn't you you should be able to live just how you were when you're single but as you are married also you're supported right yeah like there's so someone adding some level of enhancement a, a, enhancement to yeah. your life and gina said this earlier like it's between talking about parenting and being single i really do think it comes down to parenting and having to navigate what does family time look like what does couple time look like and what does alone time look like mm -hmm. and being okay with having to navigate and manage time management mm -hmm. yeah that's a lot yeah, time management and boundary management. Boundaries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's a lot to do with it. But yeah, if you're out there right now and your significant other is like controlling what how you spend your free time, I would have a I would have a conversation about that. Cause it's you should nip it in the bud right now. You should you don't want to live forever with someone telling you how to spend your free time. Rules on your own time. Do you want to make it easy to refresh your wardrobe with seasonal pieces that feel like you? Well, that's where Stitch Fix comes in. It's easy to get pieces to add to your wardrobe, whether it's date night dresses or cozy loungewear, or even this, I got this jacket that's like a coat, but then it also is a hoodie. Like it can be dressed up or it could be dressed down. And I wear it with pretty much everything. Jeans, dresses, everything. I love it. Stitch Fix makes it so easy to 
update your wardrobe with just the click of the button okay here's what you're gonna do you're gonna go to the website you're gonna fill out a little quiz it's gonna show you like different pictures of things and you just click on the pictures that you like from there a stylist will curate a specific style for you and then they'll send you some pieces that go along with that style and you pick the ones you like send back the rest it's the easiest way to get items that are just right for you from brands that you know and trust like Madewell and Sanctuary and you get looks that are just exactly perfect for you so get started today by filling out your freestyle quiz at stitchfix.com slash big mood and take advantage of free shipping and returns that's stitchfix.com slash big mood to try stitch fix stitchfix.com slash big mood today's episode is sponsored by honey the easy way to save when shopping on your iphone or computer thanks to honey manually searching for coupon codes is the thing of the past honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart so here's how it works uh when you're shopping on one of your favorite sites at checkout the honey button appears and all you have to do is click apply coupons wait a few seconds as honey searches for coupons it can find for that site and if it does find a working coupon you'll watch the prices drop i've actually been using honey since they started sponsoring us years ago and it's been so useful because i don't have to think about using the app it just pops up by itself and it starts looking for all the best coupons even like the most obscure coupons and applies it and i've been saving money i think one time i was shopping for clothes i don't remember which site but it found a coupon for like 20% off new shoppers, which it wasn't advertised anywhere on the page, but Honey found it and I got to save money. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash big mood. That's joinhoney.com slash big mood. The next one is uh, I miss not having to justify myself to another adult if I'm getting takeout two days in a row. What? No, I would never. You sound like controlling partners, all right? They do. Mm -hmm. This is borderline abusive, like where if someone's like so possessive of you that you're going to get in trouble. Yeah. If you ever have to go in the car and order food and eat it so yeah. that just <laughs> because you don't it. want to get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. They're, I don't know that they're the person for you. Yes, bless, bless you. you. Excuse me. Thank you. And there's a difference, like, okay, I don't know enough details about this person's situations, but there's a difference if you've had a conversation like, hey, uh, your partner's like, hey, you don't have a job and we're running low on finances. We can't eat out very often. I got to cook yeah. from home. And then you order takeout two days in a row. Yeah. Totally. Well, then that's different because it's a health thing. You're like, yeah, exactly. You're putting something el- else in jeopardy, like another part <laughs> of your life. In jeopardy. in jeopardy and they love you and they want you to be around or if it's like you're having heart surgery tomorrow and they're like really you're gonna just you're have gonna, a whopper yeah, yeah 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 the night before okay then okay conversation but mm-hmm. if that's not something if it's just yeah. like a regular thing you both are adults and you're both making money and you're both decide and you won't decide you want to have takeout that should, should have take not out. be a justification <laughs> yeah uh, the next one is, I miss the excitement of first dating someone you like. I vividly remember the last time I got butterflies before I kissed someone for the first time. There is definitely something about the excitement of meeting someone, the anticipation when you actually schedule time to spend together, and then the moments before the deep dive into something physical. Don't get me wrong, I'm a big sap, so it's her I'd like to experience it with again. But yeah, it'd be so nice to relive those feelings again. This is why you have to continue to court your partner. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. 1,000%. Mm-hmm. We talk about this all the time. All the time. I tell you, um, definitely have to have a date night at least once a week. At, at least, least once a week. I would say once a week, but if you can't if you can't do that, then at least once a month. You'd, but you have to have a date night, a specific date night carved out, and that's not watching TV on the couch. That's like going out, dressing up, getting nice, like going on a date, a proper date. Looking good for each other. Looking good for each other, having good conversation, having a few drinks, having whatever makes you two happy. Flirting. Finding something new together. I think discovering new things together is our favorite thing to do. It's exciting. It's like going to a new place that you've never been to. I love hearing his opinion on it. He loves hearing my opinion on it. We like are both processing new information together. Keeping it spicy. New experiences. Mm. Yeah. It you makes have me to really him. sad when because it's very easy for couples to once they get married, they're like, well, there's nothing left from here. And so they get really comfortable and a it's, routine. It really wanes the relationship and it's sad. I remember there was a rule that I learned about the 222 rule, which is you go on a date every two weeks, go on like a trip every two months and go on a like um, vacation out of country every, every two years to keep oh, it. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Like yeah. We used to um, do a rule because we value, I mean, I guess what, it depends on what your love language is, but um, we value experiences mm-hmm. more than things. So 
we didn't get each other presents at all. No birthday, anniversary, Valentine's, no no presents, no Christmas presents. But once a year, we'd go on a lavish ba- vacation, mm-hmm. like for a week, you know, get away and just experience a new part of the world together. Yeah. And we loved that. But then the pandemic happened. Yeah. So we got a bar- a robot bartender <laughs> and an inflatable investment, jacuzzi investment and pretended we were on vacation <laughs> i like that that is a vacation yeah we had a projector screen out there i know it was like we were just watching survivor in the jacuzzi <laughs> with our you. robot bartender drinks <laughs> with your like mai tai like it's like you know they're on an island and it's like we're on an island <laughs> uh the next one is i miss being alone and not feeling guilty i have a wife and daughter so when i do get a chance to be alone for a couple hours it's amazing as hell but but I feel bad that I want to be alone. I love them both to death and would do anything for them. But man, I miss my alone time. I think that's so important. Like Independence. Yeah. My long-term relationships, I would tell them sometimes like, hey, I just need a day to myself. And literally that day to myself is just me fucking off on bed and watching yeah. anime. Right. You know, no. and eating snacks, yep. crumbs everywhere. Yep. Like you just need that alone time. And I think it's hard for extro- extroverts to understand sometimes because introverts, like you, me and Gina are both more introverts than extroverts, mm-hmm. but you do a lot of people can't tell because yeah. we're like, you know, we're out there when we're having fun, we're having fun. You're introverted extroverts. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're like, we're, we're socializing, like we're here, our energy's here, we're giving it, but it's draining. Like after that night, it's like the battery went to 10% yeah. and we have to charge it back in by being alone. And that's the only way we charge. And so a lot of people that are extroverts, don't understand that like they're like okay but like, you're not gonna talk to anyone like yeah. no like what are you gonna do like alone like what do you even do and it's yeah. like i just like to be alone with my thoughts social batteries definitely yeah. is a thing and Lacey's is more introverted she's also extroverted and people wouldn't know that about her but she is more introverted and i would say she's more introverted than me and she values her alone time so yeah. on days where i'm here and i'm like doing things where i'm gone for the day you know she can w- sit on the couch and watch sports or go to the beach alone and journal yeah. like, do whatever she wants Love that mm-hmm. shit to recharge and recenter herself. And it made me realize that I also value alone time. Yeah. And I just never gave myself the opportunity. See, to do I that. think introverts and extroverts, they both need the same things. It's just that the difference is what they get recharged by. So Steve, he's an extrovert. And we both like alone time. But he gets charged by being around other people. Right. He, he gets super charged by like talking to people and being there. And I love being around people. Sure. But I get charged by, by being, being alone. alone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so that's those are just the main differences. It, a lot of people think that introvert means shy. It doesn't like people that are introverts. It doesn't necessarily mean they're like they're closed off and they're shy and they don't right. know how to talk to people. It just means that that's how they charge is being mm-hmm. alone. Yeah. You you and Steve is how Lacey and I operate. I think that's I great. Recharge. It's a good balance. It's a great balance. Because then when he, he'll just like sometimes go out and I'm like, great, he gets to go out. And even if he's quiet at home, I still feel his energy. Totally. And so when he leaves the house and like goes to socialize and I get the ho- house alone, it's like we both are getting what we need. <laughs> to recharge. And it's great. Yeah. yeah. I, there's, I remember like dating people who was like, when I tell them I need some, you know, just a day off, they're like, what do you mean? Like, you don't want to hang out with me? And they take it personally. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's nothing to do with them. Yeah. It's it like, sucks. I hate when that happens. Yeah, exactly. It's like, well, you have a day off. Why don't you want to spend it with me? It's like, dude, let me chill for a second. I want to give you the best of me. Exactly. Right. Like, I think that's what they don't understand. So it's they like, have to get back to this you. This is how mm-hmm. I give you a better version of me mm-hmm. is by like letting myself charge. Yeah. And I actively offer it to them too because like there are times when I'm like when you're newly dating someone you want to see them all the time but then yeah. I, I offer it to them too like do you want to date to yourself like I don't have to come over or anything too like I try to be mindful of that too because people need their alone time it's mm-hmm. great that you're mindful of that that's so Thank great you. uh the next one says I miss cleaning the way that I want I have <laughs> a thing about liking to clean when no one else is around just because how I do it takes time and has a weird system to it I hate being observed while I clean. I don't want to hear that I missed a spot. I don't want to hear their method of cleaning. I don't want to hear anything. I want to put my earphones in and just enjoy cleaning. Oh. I've never had two cleaners in a relationship. Me either. And I'm the cleaner. I enjoy cleaning. I have OCD and I, I, there's a method. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I was cleaning and someone said, hey, you missed a spot, I will punch them. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I don't support domestic violence. But don't fucking tell me I missed a spot. I'll wind it up. I'll wind it up. I'll wind it up. (laughs) In my head, I punch you. (laughs) So yeah, you're the cleaner. I know your house is always spotless and beautiful. And you've been like my inspiration inspiration for oh cleaning. my god i love sometimes you. sometimes i go over and i'm like that's how you organize that <laughs> oh 
Oh, so no, my house is a fucking nightmare for you right now. <laughs> no, no, it's when it's my personal space, like mm-hmm. the way that I um, take stress off of myself and I recharge is mm-hmm. I blast music and I clean. Mm-hmm. How crazy does that sound? It doesn't sound crazy anymore because I never used to be a clean, a cleaner person. But um, once that system is in place, it's all about systems. It's I swear, system. like if you can figure out a system that works for you, it'll organize your whole head mm-hmm. and make you feel so good. Um, I love putting on music and cleaning, but it takes like three hours. Yeah. And I need like to go one room at a time. One room at and a time. I don't like people walking through the room while I'm cleaning. And like you just stepped into the pile that I was sweeping. Yeah. <laughs> and he's not observing me and he's not like commenting on it. But if I'm cleaning the kitchen and then he goes and makes a meal, I'm like, I'm like, just, great. I was just cleaning. I just cleaned it. <laughs> I, I just cleaned it. I, I don't want to stop pants. you from eating, but I'm like, <laughs> oh, but could you not? System. <laughs> I could have had an enjoyable day. <laughs> I figured it's a out system. my own system. Just right, don't that's clean. exactly. I hire people. You, okay. you have <laughs> a system. system. That's my system. I know. I know I my like weaknesses, and I know how to remedy them. Yes. Um, I miss friends. Don't get me wrong. My wife has done nothing to isolate me, but when you marry your soulmate, it's easy to think that's all you'll ever need. Add a long hours job to the mix, and before you know it, she's the only person you interact with away from the desk. Then kids come along and you'd sacrifice anything for your family, especially free time, but the kids grow up and your wife craves time away from you and the kids. Then one day you realize you're alone. That's Aww. what my parents are going through. Mm. They're like, wow, we uh, we have to like come home and there's no kids and um, we don't know what to talk about. Oh. I mean, they love each other, yeah. but they just, they're like, well, sometimes we run out of things to talk about. It's like, how'd you <laughs> sleep last night? Uh, not good. Uh, me neither. Uh, what did you eat today? Oh. <laughs> food. Yeah. Oh, yeah, food. me too. Oh, uh, so-and-so is coming over later to check out the, the leak on the sprinkler. Oh, okay. <laughs> Exciting. Like, Whoa. I think that all comes down to, right? Date that, nights. Yeah, date nights again. Mm-hmm. And also remaining independent of your partner and mm-hmm. having a life outside of them. Having hobbies. Having yeah. hobbies. Figuring out like what you're passionate about, what lights you up outside of your relationship and having the conversation where you can com- you communicate early on that it's really important that you both have independent lives outside mm-hmm. one another. Because then not only are you guys both recharged, but you also have something to talk about when you get together. Absolutely. You're like, oh my God, I'll never believe what this. Ha-. Like lately, it's been a, a lot of like me telling st- there's crazy conversations at the poker table and like it, there's a lot of characters and i think it's hilarious and i think steve would really enjoy them and so i tell them i tell them all about it and we have a, a blast together and then he tells me like about his bar friends that he met and like what cra- they're always like starting some crazy businesses and stuff and, <laughs> and we just like have a blast talking to each other about what we did without each other and that's the thing because you spent time away when you're with someone 24 7 you don't need to ask about their day because you know their day mm-hmm. you were their day you were you were the whole day you're the whole <laughs> besides day. work <laughs> um i also think it's we're in i'm in a kind of unique situation where we have a lot of mutual friends like steve and i got together and we were in the same friendship group and so like jess knew both of us independently before we got together and i met jk independently of steve and then he met them later and so it's like we were all kind of in a mixed and- group like there i don't think there's a single friend that besides my high school friends like i don't think that there's friends that we have outside of of each other mm-hmm. and not on purpose it's just like we work together we play together we everything's together but we do have our hobbies where we meet other people that's so the best that's fun uh let's see the next one says I miss not having to consider anyone else when making a decision. Someone once said, being married is just asking another person what they want to eat for dinner until one of you dies. (laughs) I guess like I kind of enjoy that when I get out of a relationship because now I'm just like, I can do whatever the fuck I want and not have to worry about, well, what are you doing this weekend? Do you want to, you know, like I'm Mm -hmm. just like, I just do whatever the fuck I want now. Yeah. You can be selfish when you're single, right? Uh, More selfish with your time where you're not like, I think something that would happen in uh, my marriage was that they would be making something for themselves and wouldn't ask if I wanted any. Um, And then I'd be like, oh, but I really wanted that. That's weird. So, you know, that's weird because I know you cooked a lot for your ex um, too. Um, yeah. So that wouldn't even be a thought on to ask in your mind. Um, I but think it, a lot of people want to be, to flex being selfish. That's not the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, in our marriage, um, it's, I don't, it's not that like where it's like, what do you want to eat? I don't know what you want to eat. I don't know what you want Because I've heard that, that meme before. Um, it's more just like, are you hungry? And usually our hunger cycles are off. And it's like, oh, I just <laughs> ate. Oh, okay, I'll make something. Or vice versa. 
And then if we are hungry at the same time, it's like, ooh, what sounds good to you? And it feels like we're kind of like choosing an adventure <laughs> together. <laughs> we're like, okay, want to try out this restaurant out? I don't know. It might. It sounds like it's too filling. Okay, I have something lighter. Okay, so we'll yeah. how about how about this one? It's like, ooh, that kind of sounds good. And then we just kind of get we excited. Make it fun. About it. Yeah, we make it fun. I think it's just like keep things fun. Yeah, keep things an adventure. Keep things like new and interesting. And then, routine's the enemy. It's not exciting. Yeah, you have your system for the boring things, like right. cleaning like right. a system to make it fulfilling but the like the partner stuff like that needs to keep be that fun. fun keep it fun and light keep it different keep it going yeah keep there being things to talk about things to do together and if you want to be i i want to be selfish with my time sometimes and you want to be alone and you want to not you want to order food for yourself and not have to worry about anybody then schedule a night where they do something with their friends or on their own and then you have that time to be like what do i want yeah <laughs> and communicate like that's communication a huge thing is communication is everything because if you have an, a a understanding loving partner it shouldn't be scary to communicate your needs to them to say like hey i kind of want a night alone is that cool like yeah. and then they're like yeah fuck yeah they should the answer should be fuck yeah yeah, yeah. Like, always it should be that um and for if, everything if not there should be like some crazy reason why it's not and they're, they're like i had a surprise dinner uh, planned yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> or like uh, my mom's actually coming over is it okay if you just like if you use entertain for two hours yeah your night tomorrow night or something i'm so sorry yeah you have compromise but yeah for the most part it should feel more free than a lot of people tell you it is um i just kind of feel like there's this notion that marriage is this like ball and chain like this traditional notion of like like, yeah mm -hmm. the old school like the guy makes the money the woman's the homemaker and you guys are just fucking trapped and like Good, good luck, you know, have kids and die. And like, it just is so sad. And it really doesn't have to be that way in this modern era mm-hmm. where anyone is free to make the as much money as they want, uh, like have kids or not have kids, get married or don't get married. Like you have a lot of freedoms. And so if you're going to choose something like marriage to commit yourself to, then you better be sure that you guys fucking understand each other and like it. Yeah. And, like you like each other and you like the system you have together because it's now a legal thing that's very hard to get out of so it shouldn't be something you feel like you're settling on like right. definitely don't settle well, now i'm trapped in this so i gotta figure it out and make it work because it's too expensive to leave and i have to ask them what they want to eat for dinner <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> until one of you dies until one of yeah. you dies and Aww. if this is you and you're having this like just have conversations with each other so that this isn't you so anymore. it's not a thing it, it doesn't have to be hard it doesn't have to be torture yeah. to be together i always thought that trope was so weird like you know how people have wedding cake toppers where it's like the woman's dragging the boy, uh, the wife, the bride is dragging the the groom. That was our wedding cake top. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> it was because he played Xbox all the time, uh-huh. and I had to plan the whole wedding. And I was like, "You just need to play Xbox." And he's like, I'll, "I'll help." I was like, "I don't even know what to tell you to help with because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing." Oh and so he, our our engagement photos were um, him playing video games and me trying to seduce him, and then that's right, and then me playing video games and him like pissed off, oh. and then our wedding cake topper it was. Customized from Etsy, and it was him playing Grand Theft Auto, which was the game he was playing, Mm -hmm. and drinking a Coke Zero, which was what he drank, (laughs) and me trying to drag him (laughs) away from it. But it's that's more like dragging him away from the Xbox. Yeah, like the old like the old like ball and chain. Yeah, like oh, I'm forcing him to get married while he's trying to run away. Like the woman's always forcing him to get married. It's sad when it's like true when people are part of like that's so true. That's so them. Yeah. it should, it should be a joke. It should be yeah. like a big fat Always, joke. Yeah. Yeah. I've noticed that like the worst um, engagement posts on Instagram from, you know, it's a very pro- uh, problematic couple when the, the post starts with, we've had our ups and downs. <gasps> oh, like, no. Oh, <laughs> but here we are. Yeah. We went through the worst, but we made it. It's like... <laughs> The worst I mean, I'm, of times. I'm happy for them. Like, you know, if you worked it out and you s- resolved some really underlying resentment and now you're like on a, a fresh page, that's great. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of times they say that when they're not quite. Yeah, exactly. They're doing well. They're still working yeah. it out. And they just want to plan a wedding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or, that's what people say. They don't want to get married. They just want a wedding. Like, that's people just want That's weddings. what I want for you. I don't care if you get married. <laughs> just fucking have a wedding for me, Gina. <laughs> don't be selfish. It doesn't even need to don't be a be groom. Don't be selfish. Yeah, it doesn't even need to be a groom. I'm just like, Fish a fishbowl. I don't yeah, care. Marry something. Marry something. Mr. Nibbles. <laughs> My cat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the next one says, I miss traveling alone. I mean, I can travel alone if I wanted to, but it would feel kind of mean to be like, hey, I'm going to plan a really big, cool trip and you're not invited. 
was tip with to tip with to Bora Bora, but that was different because she had never been alone in her life, and so she kind of needed like a come to Jesus like trip uh. where like she got to experience that for once because uh, she was a teen mom and she was had a boyfriend or um, a husband and had a t- had Isaac, and then she was with Isaac the entire adult right, life, her right, entire right. adult life, and then she was with Casey, mm-hmm. and it was like she never experienced traveling alone, being alone, doing mm-hmm. anything alone. She felt it almost like she couldn't, maybe she couldn't be alone. And I think she needed to know, okay, I can be alone. Now, now that I have that, I'm happy I have my family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can and appreciate that. And it helps you appreciate your family more. Totally. I think too much of one thing maybe does drive people insane. So too much aloneness makes people want to be with someone. Too much of being with someone makes Wants people want to be alone. Be alone. Mm-hmm. If you can just create balance in your life, um, you'll, you won't f- feel like this is a pl- problem from your partner. Right. You know, like, I think it's just a lot of things are just people not voicing their needs. Right. The balances, the systems in place and communication. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I used to go away for New Year's um, just on a, a loan trip, like just alone for three days. Like I'd plan a vacation somewhere and mm-hmm. be there alone. And it was great. It's like a really reflective thing and it's beautiful and you get to just like melt away all the stress so it's uh, the it's person just ask for it yeah uh the next one says i could go without all the rank ass farts my <laughs> husband farts sounds like there's a man playing the trombone trapped inside of him i hate them they're so fucking loud but at least they don't smell so i guess i have to count my blessings they don't smell <laughs> i know that you and steve have a very strict no bathroom sounds no farts no whatever same around yeah. each other and you and tiff too right yeah, yeah we've gotten flat yeah. for it but see like and i think it's i'm i've been won over because um even though people comment like that's you know you should be comfortable with your partner blah 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 look i was on your team i totally get what you're saying i used to say that i used to be like well it just means you're comfortable around each other mm-hmm. that's an old meme how many couples do you know they're old and married and they fart around each other a lot and they hardly ever have sex yeah that's old. not sexy and like you got to keep some level of mystery you gotta keep yeah. the magic and so steve came into my our relationship like yo i have one rule we don't fart around each other. <laughs> oh, it was like, Steve's idea. It was Steve's idea. Oh. Yeah, I, had, I was on the other side. I was on the like, oh, we've always farted around each other yeah. like in <laughs> relationships. Once you get com- comfortable enough. And I had to ask him, I was like, "Cause you're, is it because you're not comfortable around me? Or is it because he's like, no, I got one piece of advice from a married friend that still bangs his wife a lot. And it was that he, he they don't fart around each other. They don't poop around each other. They don't pee around each other. They keep bathroom life private mm-hmm. and they still find each other very sexually attractive right and he's like i'll never forget that and i will i really want to keep the magic alive and i was like i've never tried it but in every relationship the sexual desire has gone down and we have farted around each other so maybe there <laughs> is some congruency yeah. to that i will try your method and see if it works mm-hmm. it works and so far i am more attracted to him than ever i don't know and he's you know he he's Getting older and getting way more attractive to me. Mm-hmm. So I've always not farted in front of my significant others, but I did date one guy that had IBS, and he oh, was just—he did not he hide help it. it. I know, but he didn't hide it all either. Like he didn't try to at all. So oh. like, we'll it's be, about the intent. Yeah, we'll just be laying in bed and this rank ass smell. I'm like, dude, did you fart? He's like, yeah. I'm like, why didn't you warn me? He goes, oh yeah, sorry. And it's just like, oh, no. dude, like it gets annoying yeah. after a while, you know? Cause then you're offended. Yeah. And it, that stinks. It yeah. subconsciously <laughs> makes you less attracted to them. Yeah. You know, it's not even a, I don't even think it's a conscious thing because in my head with my ex-boyfriends, mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know. Like I never associated it with mm-hmm. the fart, but I think there is like a, <laughs> because they become more brotherly. Yeah. Like who else does that in front That's of me? True. My brother. My brother does that in front of me. Yeah. So, and am I attracted to my brother? Fuck no. no. So, you kind of start subconsciously becoming my brother yeah. or a roommate or, or like, like someone. Would, and platonic. I don't want to be married to my brother. Or you you would do it. Um, no. Uh, you would do it in the <laughs> car <laughs> and just not oh. roll a window down. I'm like, dude, like it's like consideration, you know? Absolutely. Crack a window. Yeah. I hate when they think it's funny too. Exactly. It's, like, it's not funny. And like, then, we're not 12. But there was one time that I act like I thought he was sleeping. So, I quietly it <laughs> in the bed. Did he giggle? Was it no, one of those? No, he rolled was it over. Where? No, he, yeah. He rolled over, he smelled it, and he actually yelled at me. And he was like, that is so fucking unattractive. What? I was like, I've been with you for a year, and I've had to put up with this for a year. And the one it was time the same you asked, guy? 
No. Yeah. The like, recent, the recent one. in the car and the windows were up. No. The recent one. Like, it turned into a full on argument. And he's like, that's fucking disgusting. That's so weird of yeah. him. So that's weird. Mean. Yeah, it was mean. That's mean. That's so yeah. mean. And also just like hypocritical. How does he not see that that narcissist? What? Mm-hmm. And hello, you thought he was sleeping. You were trying to exactly. be considerate. Exactly. It was wild. If you do a. That's not. That doesn't yeah. Help. No. Yeah. Also, you do those in your sleep too. So yeah. Yeah. It just happens. Mm-hmm. We don't even know it. <laughs> it was wild. What do you want to eat tonight? Maybe you want a home cooked favorite, but don't feel like going to the store, or you want something exciting and new, but it would be great to stay in tonight. DoorDash connects you with everything you want, whenever and however you want it. Get what you want to eat right now and right to your door with DoorDash. Along with the restaurants you love, you can now get groceries and other essential items delivered with DoorDash. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items in under an hour. Craving late night ice cream forget that one key ingredient for dinner or maybe you just need to stock up for the week with doordash get everything in one app with over 300,000 partners you can support your neighborhood's go-to's or choose from your favorite national restaurants like popeyes chipotle and cheesecake factory ordering is easy and your items will be left safely outside your door when you choose contactless delivery which is awesome because then I don't have to make myself look like a decent human being whenever they drop it off. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code Big Mood. That's 25% off up to $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code Big Mood. Don't forget, the code is Big Mood for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms to apply. Bone apple tea. Do you feel overwhelmed when shopping for skincare? There's like so many items out there, so many trends, so many ingredients. Don't you just want someone trustworthy to be like, hey, don't stress, this is what you need, and this is why it'll work for your skin? Well, that's why Custom RX Treatment from Roderm was created. It's personalized prescription skincare that's designed with dermatologists to help you reach your goals, like getting clearer, smoother, healthier skin, mayhaps younger skin. Oh, you don't think that's possible? It is. Have you heard of some of this new tech? technology okay well all you have to do is complete a 10 minute online visit to share your concerns like acne fine lines wrinkles dark spots you name it all of the above and then also you're gonna like tell them some of your medical history and the visit's free and i love that you can do it without even leaving your home because i don't like changing out of pajamas if appropriate uh, a u.s licensed healthcare professional will prescribe a custom rx treatment that makes sense for your skin so it's made with a blend of dermatologist selected ingredients tailored to your needs and right now new members will receive a 30 30-day trial of Custom RX Treatment plus Roderm's Hydrating Cleanser and Protecting SPF Lotion for just $5 when you go to roderm.com forward slash big mood. Shipping is free and you'll get free and unlimited follow-ups with your healthcare provider to support you through your skincare journey. If you're prescribed, get your first month of Custom RX Treatment plus Roderm's Hydrating Cleanser and Protecting SPF Lotion for $5. So go to roderm.com forward slash big mood roderm.com slash big mood uh the next one says i miss controlling the remote at all times watching anything without constant streaming commentary oh no, yeah we, um, we don't really watch a lot of tv in my house so. us either i can't imagine if the tv was all, oh, actually i can my ex did that like he needed to have background noise at all times mm-hmm. and i lived in a studio and we lived together in a studio and so there's no room to escape to too much noise and it was just a lot of <laughs> noise at all times and i i yeah it drove me nuts and like when he was gone i was like the silence <laughs> so you nice. like do you hear that it's so nothing, nice. <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> i remember um like during dating like when you're just getting to know people i was getting to know this guy and every time we came over he's like i really want to watch prison break so we would just watch prison break all the time but i'm like i'm kind of bored of the show um can we change it he's like and then he's he threw a fit what He's like, no, I don't like why. Like, I want to finish Prison Break, blah blah. blah. Like, I'm, I'm like, all right, peace out. Like, yeah, you and I are not gonna work out. Yeah, long term. it's not gonna. Yeah, no. If you can't compromise, it's just not gonna work. Right? I was gonna say it's all about compromise. I love rom coms, and I'm a rom com <laughs> girl. And Lacey loves uh like mysteries and and thrillers. <gasps> I like those too. Yeah, and I don't. Can <laughs> I just be sit in the middle of you two? <laughs> <laughs> so we compromise on those days. I'm like, I won't look, and you can tell me when it's <laughs> over. Thank you. And then I make her watch like Hallmark with me. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes. Lifetime TV. Yeah. Oh, I love a lifetime. Yeah. Steve doesn't like cartoons, like any animation, and I love animated. That's things adorable. And oh, um, yeah. like Pixar movies and stuff. And uh, but I did make him watch Wreck It Ralph with me, and he had to admit that he liked it. <laughs> so, um, and he did. And he's like, the writing's really good. I was like, yeah. See, it's not just like some 
cartoon Cartoon. kids movie okay Mm -hmm. and uh he really likes action movies and i don't i don't like action movies at all do you compromise on watching yeah we both will watch each other's shit and um sometimes i admit like oh that was actually a pretty good movie like they had a plot line not just like bang bang i have a gun like boom 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 boom. (laughs) i have car that goes fast (laughs) i crush things yeah everything explodes for no reason michael bay movies (laughs) i ate a cake and exploded like he loves die hard and i'm like he made me watch and i was like oh he's such a dude it wasn't that bad. <laughs> He's such a dude. He's such a dude. <laughs> oh, hi, oh, nipples. Hello, You're there. Dude, too. Hi. Also, too, if you compromise and you give it a chance, you might just like it. You might like it. Yeah. That's what I don't get when people get angry or mad or put up such a fight. It's like, what are you scared of? You might like it. Yeah. Come on. At least the answer's try yes. Try something. Like, yeah. Try something. You're so stubborn for no reason. Yeah. Uh, and the last one here says, I miss not having to share my leftovers. When I was single, I can treat myself to Chinese food and the leftovers were mine. Now I have to be considerate and share. It's terrible. What? Again, boundaries. Yeah, Your I leftovers don't are like. yours. Yeah. I don't like people having my leftovers. Yeah. I don't like leftovers, so I'll give you my leftovers. Yeah, yes. Oh, I love Steve leftovers. Steve hates leftovers. Really? Yeah. For someone who eats like a starving raccoon. I know. <laughs> he just, he, I'm like, are you a snob? Like, why don't you? He's like, I just don't, I just don't want to eat it. It's leftover food. It's not, it's not fresh food. I don't don't like to eat it i'm like then why'd you bring it home because he'll still bring it home and i'm like why did you bring it home and we used to i used to eat his leftovers but he, now i'm a pescatarian <laughs> and he's a meat eater still and i don't i can't eat his leftovers so it just it's a waste i'm like <laughs> I don't know why you order so much food then. But I don't this know. man cooks his chicken till it's oh, ash. Yeah, I think he <laughs> likes the taste of a, an ashtray garbage can. A fresh Ooh, one. And, and so some some chef prepared food is not not good. <laughs> not, not up his alley. I never finish my food. I always, I'm, I'm a grazer throughout the day. So I end up taking the the food home. And then it's perfect because Lacey loves leftovers. And so she'll eat them. But That's if I bring great. something home. Yeah. That I want like chocolate cake. Mm. Like you said, Nikki, it's it's boundaries and it's like, don't you dare touch my fucking yeah, chocolate cake. Yeah, she's a dessert. She's yeah. a dessert monster. Yeah. yeah. Like every time she comes over, she's like, I'll bring dessert. I'm I, like, I have, okay, I've got I know she's gonna, she's gonna bring it. <laughs> she's gonna bring it. There was a phase we went through where she would always come over and we'd go to the grocery store and get cinnamon rolls and always. then we'd bake cinnamon rolls and it was so, we'd watch movies and like eat cinnamon rolls. It was delicious. <laughs> so good. There One weren't of, um, leftovers then. No. <laughs> One of my biggest pet peeves when I was in a relationship was, I always share my food. You know, like if I'm eating something, I'm always gonna share it. And they take the most giant fucking bite. Oh, the like, biggest of the best bite. Yeah. Or like, do you want some of my drink? And then they finish it. Aww. And I'm like, what the fuck? And this like, is why oh, we have sorry. nice things. Like, this is, that's not cute. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck, man? The only time that Steve and I have had, and it wasn't even real arguments. It's just like, yo, dude, like, yeah. stop. What the hell? Um, was when like we would get an appetizer like that we share together. And let's say there's like four cauliflower or let's say there's like four of the thing that comes in like a mm. four egg rolls mm. he eats three of them and then i get the <laughs> one and i'm like i thought this was a partnership yeah. <laughs> i wanted that extra egg roll Yo. what's not fair is when they only put five egg rolls oh yeah and there's two not of you even. and you're like can you just make it even because now we have to figure out who's gonna he's take still the eat, extra one four it. and i still eat the one <laughs> or like i um i ordered egg rolls that's why egg rolls are popping up because i ordered egg rolls as like i like to get like a side if because I don't know if the main dish is going to be big enough. Like, because sometimes in a new restaurant, you just don't know. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to get egg rolls on the side. And the main dish was big enough. So I didn't eat the egg rolls yet. But I was like, I'm going to have those tomorrow. It's going to be sick. And I go to put them in the fridge. And it's an empty container. And I'm like, where the fuck did those egg rolls <laughs> go? And he's like, oh, I ate them. I'm like, did you order egg rolls? He's like, I thought they came for free. And oh, oh, my God. God. Boundaries, like, Steve. Boundaries. <laughs> No, <laughs> come for free. Who gives egg rolls for free? Them. <laughs> Fuck! What restaurant does that? You wanted like, those. I don't know. I thought it came with my meal. You thought it came with your soup? Yeah. <laughs> Who gives out free <laughs> egg rolls? Those are expensive to make. I know. There, there was like a large portion. It wasn't like little mini ones yeah. that come on the side of. A they were thing. full blown. They were full ass egg Lumpia rolls. size. I didn't even get to try one. Freaking oh, Steve. No. <laughs> I, for the most part, like I don't really care. Um, yeah. When whenever that happens, like the big bite thing, but. Uh, there was one time when it happened like three times that week and I just I could no, I could handle that. Yeah. It's, it's not a big it thing was a fucking you know uncrustable oh yeah 
<laughs> and like, those he, aren't big. Those are tiny. He bit right in the middle where the, oh, the no. best part is. That is yeah, the best bite. Yeah. He's like, can I take the best part of your meal? And Thank I was you. like, and I looked at him, I was like, what the hell? Like the first couple times, he's like, oh, sorry, babe. It's not cute. And then the third time, he's like, why do you keep getting fucking mad over this? <gasps> and I'm like, Dude, and they love to put it on us. They yeah. always like, like I always see the memes like when your girlfriend has to take a bite and she eats the whole thing. I'm like, yeah. no, it's fucking you, bro. It's you. <laughs> Stop projecting it yes. on us. You and your big mouth. <laughs> we never had that, but um, there was a really weird thing we had in the beginning that it took years to come to light. Um, when we first started dating, I if I wanted a bite of his food, he'd give me a bite, vice versa, whatever. Except for when I wanted a bite of his burrito once, he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't let me have a bite of his burrito. And I was like, what the fuck? Did you just say like, no? Like, just give me a bite. And we got actually got into a little bit of an argument because not about the burrito, but just like, why? Like, why won't you let me have a burrito? And he's like, it's gross. It's like, you know, a burrito, I don't know, it's wet. And like, you know, drool gets in there. I'm like, drool gets in there? <laughs> how are you eating that? You're drooling You're eating it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, how the fuck would you think I'm going to backwash your burrito? Yeah. Like, what the fuck? And so every time, like, because I forgot a couple times about the burrito thing. And so I would ask him for a bite. And he's like, not with burritos. And he was just like, took the stand against having a bite of his burrito. And then like speed forward to like five, six years go by. We're well into our marriage. He's eating a burrito. And um, and uh, I'm like, I know you don't want me to have a bite of that. But I really want to try it. But can I cut it? Or like, you know, like have a bite. And he's like, dude, you could have a fucking bite. And he's like... I don't know what my problem was. I, I It was like, Aww. I had a weird thing one time, like where I just thought I had to take a stand in the beginning of our relationship because my ex and like, I just had a lot of like weird boundary issues. And and then after I did it the first time, I felt like I had to keep up the guys <laughs> that it was like the burrito and not, and not like not me. the burrito. And it was like about the burrito. And so I just kept go- it going. And I'm so sorry about that. Like, I don't have a thing about burritos. <laughs> that is a long standing. No, it went hell? for years. It went like for like the first two years of our relationship. I was like, he's really fucking weird about burritos. We had a fight about it like a few times. <laughs> I can't so, like, have a bite. And like, yeah, because I would forget because he shared all of his other food, but just the fucking burrito weird. wouldn't let me have a bite. And he's like made up this whole, he was getting upset that I would backwash his burrito. Yeah. But then he needed to stand by it. And yeah. And then he's like, <laughs> fuck, I need to, I need to commit. To I gotta this, get out of here. To this lie. <laughs> I don't think I've ever said no to anyone, like friend, significant other, or family that's asked for some of my food. I just don't know how to say no. Yeah. It's like, like, how would you say no? Like, what would be my justification for like, right. no? No, I you want know, like, it. I've never <laughs> said no. I don't think I, I would ever either. say no, no now, but I was kind of a germ freak when I was a kid. Mm. And um, especially with like ice cream, like, you know, when like, like yeah, your parent would kind of lick your ice cream cone or, or your parent lollipop. Would lick. Yeah. And I'm oh, like, okay. Yeah. Your that feels singular. Yeah. And I wouldn't eat I wouldn't eat it. If okay. my mom licked my ice cream, I'm like, <laughs> that's like an unspoken rule that I assume everyone knows though. You don't ask to lick someone's ice cream Thank or lollipop, you. right? Thank you. No, you don't. I wouldn't yeah. be sucking on a lollipop and be like, you want some? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and my aunt thought it was really funny if I was eating a popsicle to come along and bite the tip of it. Oh, and no. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I can't eat it now. <laughs> I would jokingly like if I was dating someone that I would jokingly just like eat my lollipop and I'd be like, boop, and I'm sticking it in their mouth. <laughs> See, that's funny. That shit's yeah. funny though. Yeah. But like I don't I think it's an unspoken rule. Like you don't ask someone for that, you know? Yeah. Mm. You wanna know the grossest thing though? Yeah. Is like what? so I had this thing, like with the saliva thing, I couldn't handle it. And then in seventh grade. Um, I, we go on oh, eighth grade. We go on this like class trip to Washington D.C. It's like for like spring break and like you're learning about like our nation's history, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. And it was only like you know a few like a like a classroom full of kids our age that got to go. And um, my crush was there, and he had no idea that I liked him. Like we weren't in any classes together. He was in the other class, mm-hmm. and like we got to like you know be in hotel rooms, and like we were on the whole trip together. And I kept trying to sit next to him, and we got went to this candy shop where you get like rock candy rock candy and so you know the swizzle sticks and Aww. like so i was like i was you know eating it and then he's like can i have some and it's a swizzle stick you know it's all saliva yeah. but it's oh, my yeah. fucking crush so i was like mm. oh, no. <laughs> and he like like <laughs> oh, oh, no. and he gave it back and i was like <laughs> <laughs> i'm like it's like we kiss <laughs> But that was the, that was the first and only time that I you shared a lollipop ever. Yeah. Shared a lollipop or an ice cream Aww. or anything, and I was like, "This is gross," but also it's you. Oh, but the, the things we do for is, love, yeah, it's very particular. It's very yeah. filled with saliva because it gets all in the crevices. Yeah, yeah. And it's like a it's like you're slurping up yeah. spit yeah. in there. 
<laughs> and you know, a visceral drool reaction too, to that. Like, drool in general, like when we talked about like oral sex, I'm yeah. like, I don't like drool, like just at all. That's I the only time I love drool. Don't like saliva. <laughs> a lot of people do, and it's very normal. But for some reason, I just can't handle it. Like I picture it. No, going down my ass crack, and I just. <laughs> I just can't handle the no? the, the viscosity Hot. of it. Hot. Yeah. yeah. Mm -mm. Nope. And and Steve's very good at not backwashing my vagina. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know how he eats a burrito, but if it's anything like he eats out my vagina. Well, then you shouldn't want he part shouldn't, of that burrito. But, yeah. Worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> I remember like sharing drinks wise. Like I remember when I was little, my uncle would share my drink with me. And then when he pulls like the straw or drink out, there's like a trail of drool. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, you can hold on to that. You can keep that. It's, it's fine. It's yours now. Yeah, it's yours now. I don't want to see the drool or the spit, you know? Like, if no, I don't see it, yeah, yeah it's probably it's fine. It's not there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they, it's like, They say that um, the last sip of any beverage is 50% saliva. Okay. So, I, like, oh, ever no. since I learned that, and that might not be true. I learned this when I was a kid, and it stuck with me forever. <laughs> it might not be true at all, but I have never been able to drink the last sip of a drink. Children ever. do backwash. I've never been able to do it. Well, well, they do. Children and you can see little floaties in there. And you can see they've been eating pizza or whatever it, their little <laughs> mouths have been eating. Oh, I think, uh, I think that's the only sounds. person I won't share with. Yeah. Children. Love them. I think no, that's a good spot. I think that's a good spot to end this yeah. episode because <laughs> now I don't ever want to take the last sip of anything that I shared with don't anyone. Do oh my God. Uh, okay, guys. Thanks for watching this episode <laughs> on uh, if marriage and uh, I just can't think about it. Oh, oh, can't think about it. Um, but please follow Jess Lee Zama. We're gonna have all her socials down below. Is there anything you want to promote? Anything you want to say? Uh, I think we talked a lot about finding the one, and I think everything we yeah. said here is uh, communicate, true court, so. communicate, boundaries, compromise, set boundaries Systems. before committing yourself to forever, and then you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be okay. be okay. And have uh, a system. Don't share burritos. Okay. Make sure you guys uh, <laughs> like, give us five stars, thumbs up, comment down below about how you feel about fucking burritos. I don't know, man. I'm we just don't grossed care. out. Just, I'm just comment something. We're lonely. Leave so us something. Now all I have in my brain is saliva. Grossed Gina's out. single. She needs something to read. Give true. us a message. This is true. All right. We love you guys. <laughs> we Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.